a comprehensive look at trends, fund profiles, and more in exploring ETFs. India ETFs have been on a tear lately, uh, the stocks that are in those ETFs especially, and here now to talk more about it, is our ETF Research Director, Nina Mishra. So what it comes down to is emerging market stocks yes. ha have been doing very well. So emerging market stocks in general have been doing very well this year. Uh, after a strong beating down they took late last year, mm -hmm. uh, this year they have rebounded. Um, th that is thanks mainly to change in Fed's tone. Fed is more dovish now. Yep. And uh, the dollar is stable now. On the softer side, dollar is no longer surging. Indian stocks and the currency in particular have surged over the past month mm -hmm. or so. Uh, that is mainly due to improved chances of uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi uh, winning the upcoming general elections. Okay. Uh, India will hold its general elections in April and May of this month, uh, this year, and uh, some of the recent polls suggest that his party may win majority. Uh, so that would be good for political stability, and uh, his administration in general has been supportive of macroeconomic reforms. I see. And, uh, uh, the economy, in fact, slowed down a little bit uh, in the last quarter, and in December, the economy grew at 6.6 percent rate, uh, which means India is still the fastest growing major economy in the world. Mm. And the central bank recently cut key interest rates, which may boost the economy further. Uh, Oil helping out here too? Yeah, and uh, CNBC recently reported that both JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs are now bullish on Indian stocks. Uh, according to JP Morgan, India has the best growth story among emerging markets, okay. and Goldman Sachs also upgraded the country to overweight rating. Uh, and oil prices are expected to remain stable this year. Mm -hmm. uh, and that helps India a lot because India is a big importer of crude. So as a result of all these uh, factors, foreign investors have poured a lot of money into the country this month. According to a Bloomberg report, uh, foreign investors uh, poured $3.3 billion into Indian stocks through May, t May, sorry, through March 18th this month, uh, so within 18 days. So that has led to stocks and currency surging and benefiting these India ETFs. All right, so let's take a look at a few of these. There's the iShares MSCI India ETF. Uh, the ticker is INDA. Mm -hmm. So these are three different ETFs that we are discussing today, and they have very different flavors. So okay. all they, they all provide uh, exposure to Indian stocks. This is the most popular India ETF. It has about $5 billion in assets under management. Uh, it provides exposure to large and mid-cap Indian companies. Uh, so you can go to quote page on zax.com to look at the details. It has an expense ratio of 68 basis points. You can go to external homepage, iShares web page for this ETF and you can look at the holdings. Now well-known Indian companies, Reliance, HDFC Bank, Infosys, Tata Consultancy, uh, Axis Banks, so mainly financials, energy and information technology sectors of India are represented in this ETF. All right, and then Wisdom Tree has uh, the India Earnings Fund. Uh, yes. So this ticker is EPI. It focuses on profitable Indian companies of all capitalizations, all sizes, I see. and holdings are selected as well as weighted by earnings. So we can take a look at this uh, ETF by again going to zax.com code page. 
it is slightly more expensive uh, compared to the earlier one because of this enhanced indexing 84 basis points and expense ratio you can go to wisdom tree web page for this ETF uh, similar companies Reliance HDFC Bank and forces data consultancy Indian oil all major companies uh, uh, from uh, energy finance and IT sectors of India but you will see that weightings are a little bit different all these companies are weighted by their earnings instead of their capitalizations and iShares also has uh, an India small cap ETF yes so as the name suggests it focuses on smaller companies uh, within India uh, the ticker is SMIN mm -hmm. and obviously being focused on smaller companies it is more volatile it will do much better when Indian stocks do well and it will underperform uh, when Indian stocks do bad so uh, expect more volatility uh, if you invest in the CDF but this has been soaring this year this month it has an expense ratio of 77 basis points a uh, nice dividend yield of 1.6 percent and you can go to Aisha's web page if you want to take a look at the holdings you will not see familiar companies because it focuses on smaller companies within India which are which have more potential for growth RBL Bank Federated Bank um, and Info Edge India uh, Apollo hospitals these are among the top holdings okay how do they all compare so on this uh, slide I have the performance uh, charts of these three ETFs which I have compared with the broader emerging market ETF mm. EEM and the S&P 500 ETF uh, SPY so as you can see the small cap India ETF SMIN was the best performer with about 16 percent return over the past month uh, the wisdom tree product which weights its uh, which selects uh, profitable Indian companies uh, is up about 13 percent uh, the market cap weighted India ETF is up about 11 percent whereas uh, the broader emerging markets and the S&P 500 ETF ETFs are up between 2 percent and 3 percent this month all right, do you own either of these? I do not. Okay, thank you for the information. More ETF information is always on our website, zax.com, in the ETF section. Use the Funds tab in the top toolbar to guide you there. And don't forget ETF Spotlight. That's the weekly podcast that Nina does. Gives you a lot of uh, extra ETF information in that audio podcast on the podcast page of our website. Go down all the way to the bottom of the homepage, Click on the word podcast. It'll take you right there. With Nina, I'm Terry Ruffalo.